So you know how every time it feels like people on the news talk about the climate crisis, it is bad news, it is gloom, it is doom. Well, how about this? Some good news on this tonight, because scientists today say the Earth's ozone layer is actually healing. Look at these pictures. This is a big deal. The ozone layer, you know, is the thing that blocks radiation from the sun that's been linked to skin cancer, cataracts, crop damage. The ozone layer protects us from some of that. You can see this animation now that NASA is releasing. The change in how thick the ozone is, the ozone is over the last few decades. It's actually getting better. And why is it getting better? Because people aren't using as many, manufacturers aren't producing as many CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. This is something that's in insulating foams, it's a refrigerant, it's not good for the ozone. For the ozone. People kind of got smart to that and it's been used less and less. That's been making a difference. Now listen, here is your grain of salt caveat, right? The progress is slow. They hope this hole that's actually a thinning in the layer over, the, over Antarctica is going to be filled, but it'll take some time, 43 years time specifically to be exact. <laughs> Bill Karens is joining us now. And Bill, like we always have you on to talk about the destructive storms yeah. um, and especially what we're seeing, for example, in California. We often ask you about the climate connection as well. And this is a big deal for the climate because it means that not all hope is lost, right? <laughs> that things that humans can do can actually help undo the things that humans did before. Hallie, in terms of environmental issues, this is the biggest victory that we've had in humanity. Like, we had a major problem. In well, please 90... write our lead next time. My Lord, Bill, that's one way to say it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you think about it, you know, 1985, all of a sudden scientists were like, wait a second, we have this hole in our ozone. And the ozone is what protects our skin from ultraviolet rays and our crops. And they were like, we got to fix this. And as a world population, we've never come together before to solve a problem like that. And so the U.S. UN met, they came up with a Montreal Protocol. It only took two years, and they were everyone, everyone was like, yes, let's get rid of these chlorofluorocarbons. You know, that's what was in your refrigerators, in your air conditioners, and they banned them. Now, it took until the year 2000 for the hole in the ozone. That was when it hit its its peak, its climax. That was when it was its largest. So it still was 13 years later. And so over the last 20 years, scientists have been watching it and they were going to say it was getting better, but they weren't quite sure. And then finally, they've now come out as, you know, yesterday and they said it had hit its peak. It is as biggest. And as you mentioned, it's still going to take a long time. And this is kind of our climate lesson here, Hallie, is that they say it's going to be till 2060s until Antarctica fully recovers. That's going to be 80 years later. So when you do something to the atmosphere of our planet, it, and then you want to try to change it, it's going to take a long time. And that's what people really don't understand about even if we stopped using, you know, all of you know, oil and gas and everything today, it's like 100, 150 years later that those changes would be found. But that makes a difference, right? I mean, whether it's 80 years or 100 years or 150 years, presumably humanity will still be on this planet. Oh, I think that's a lot of people are like, okay, so we did that. We solved that problem. We got together as a world population and we solved this. So what's, why can't we do this? Why can't we do this um, with climate change? And the biggest thing is, is that we had something called hydrofluorocarbons to replace the, the uh, Chloro. chlorofluorocarbons, right. the CFCs. And we literally just swapped them out. And by the way, it's not, those aren't the best for climate change either. So, you know, those actually help warm the planet, the ones that we replace the chlorofluorocarbons with. Uh, okay, Bill, I mean, good I vibes know, just only, please. Can we please, but, just for once? Just for once. But I think the biggest deal is, I think you, Hallie, would put something else in your car. I wouldn't use gas on my stove in my house if we had something to replace it with. The biggest issue with climate change is we just haven't had anything to do that with yet. Yeah, Bill Karens, it's such a good point. Uh, thank you so much for being with us to break this down. Interesting stuff for sure. Yeah. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.